The certainty, the part two ending. The only drawback to going to Spain right now is that it is hot. Definitely not peak season for travel. I already checked with my travel agent and they'll have to submit a document stating that I passed a test within 72 hours prior to arriving at the airport in Spain. You won't get through customs without showing it to them. So, plan on taking the test three days prior to your flight. I think that last night we spent together she was sullen because she knew it might be the last time she saw me. She was on the cusp of making a decision between me and her ex. So that is the reason for the desperate lovemaking. I think she wanted to feel connected to me one last time before pulling the plug. Gosh, I feel so honored. As part of my course, I have to attend a couple of dance classes at a local dance academy. All flamenco guitarists generally start off their careers by playing for dancers and putting in long hours at dance schools. I will be mainly observing my teacher and the more advanced players, but I know for sure there will be some beautiful young women to watch and admire. However, I am not a lecherous old man, and I won't be trying for any dates. Either way I'm feeling a lot better and looking forward to getting out of here and hoping the change in scenery will help take my mind off all this crap. Well, I got everything arranged. My house sitter comes tomorrow and I've already finished packing. Guitars are in their shipping cases and I took my test yesterday afternoon. Came back clean of course. I wish I could say it was nice, but guitar players in Spain are a dime a dozen. They are everywhere. I get way more gals chatting me up in the States for my playing. Being an American is what would attract a Spanish lady to me more than anything. Question. I bought a bunch of new clothes and shoes for my trip. Nice stuff. I got rid of the clothes Sarah bought me, except for my watch. It is an Omega Speedmaster. It's a gorgeous watch and it cost her close to three and a half grand. I should mail it back to her, shouldn't I? I mean, I don't care if she keeps the jewelry I bought her, but I don't feel comfortable keeping this thing. I'm keeping the watch. I'm just going to wear it for dress occasions and wear my Apple Watch the rest of the time. Arrived in Spain. I just got done with my classes for the day and am getting ready to go to get some dinner with some new friends I made. It is about 10.30 p.m. here. Anyway, I said I wouldn't post unless I had an update. I got a text from my house sitter that something very interesting happened last night. A woman came by my house around 8 p.m. last night and asked if I was home. My house sitter told her I was gone and would be for a month. She asked him where I had gone and he of course told her he could not tell her. He asked her if she needed anything and she said no and just left without saying anything else. He said the blood drained out of her face when he told her I was gone. I asked him if she fit the description of Sarah that I had given him before I left and he confirmed it was probably her. He says she looked like hell, like she had been crying. I saw some more texts from her today but I didn't read them. Just flushed them. It's funny she looks like hell, because I'm going to be sitting at a table full of beautiful dancers tonight and I am sure they will provide a much needed distraction. I didn't expect her to come back so soon either. I'm so glad I wasn't there because I could have been weak. But I have stayed radio silent. Anyways, I find that each day passes I feel much better. My class is very demanding and I have discovered that I was nowhere near as far along as I thought I was as a player. There are teenagers here who play circles around me. I have a lot of bad habits that I developed due to not getting properly instructed and my teacher gets frustrated with me. But I'm mucking through it. This has really kept my mind focused off my personal problems and off Sarah. The country is scenic, looks just like inland California, food is awesome and the women are fiercely beautiful. I had a rough nightmare three or four nights ago, and I dreamed of Sarah. I woke up crying. There are moments when I drop into deep sorrow and the pain is almost unbearable. I love her and hate her at the same time and all I wish is to stop thinking about her. Last night after dinner I was on a high. I had a great time just being with people and having good conversation. And yet even with people all around me, I felt lonely, because the woman I love wasn't there. When I got back to my house, I slumped back into my funk again. I was thinking how much Sarah would love it here. See, I have to train myself to stop thinking those thoughts. Conquering my mind has been the hardest thing to do. I am far from strong. It is going to take a long, long time to get myself right. I am at a Moroccan cafe tonight. It's a little after 11 p.m. and I am recuperating from a day of walking and shopping. Letting my hands heal. I literally have been playing 10 hours a day for the past week. My calluses have calluses. Yesterday I had the first panic attack of my life. I was at a dance studio playing with some fellow students while the teen dance classes were underway. The dance teacher was a little red-headed Spanish woman and she and I were laughing and talking between dance classes. Not really flirting, just friendly banter. She is a beautiful married middle-aged woman, small and curvaceous, just like Sarah, and all of a sudden, I felt my chest tightening up. She saw I was looking pale and she told me to go and sit in an adjoining room. I went in and sat in a big comfy chair and all of a sudden, I felt that flush of cold water and boom. Out cold. I had slid off the chair and landed on the floor in a heap. I woke up with paramedics looking down at me in an oxygen mask on my face. I felt like I had gotten drugged with mushrooms or something. They were taking my pulse and talking Castilian at me a hundred miles an hour. I was groggy as hell and scared. By the time my Spanish brain kicked and I was able to deduce from the medic that I had had a panic attack. My heart is good and they couldn't find anything else wrong with me. 
So, Maritza, the teacher, sent me home and I took the rest of the night off and just stayed put. I cried and cried and cried. Ugly crying. This crap with Sarah has done a number on me. Damn I hate feeling weak like this. To make it plain, yes, I was in love with Sarah. The mistake I made was assuming she felt the same. She would tell me she loved me so I believed her. I think what I am going to do is stay dark for several months until I get my feet back under me emotionally. Once I am there, I will send Sarah a letter spelling out all my feelings and emotions. I am one of those guys who needs closure. I do not like leaving loose ends, and to walk away and not give her a piece of my mind will be something I regret. It will not be an affectionate or heartfelt letter. I am going to state plainly what I think of her and her crappy actions. On a positive note, I performed a complete performance this morning in front of my class, a song I have been every evening on for a week. My teacher actually complimented me and the singer, who worked with me on it gave me a lot of encouragement and told me I was better than most first-year students she has worked with, and to keep on it. So, I feel good today. So, now off to the manicurist to get my nails redone. I'm going to write out the letter and sit on it for six months, then, if I still feel like sending it, I'm simply going to state the facts and show her in full detail my beef against her and what crappy person I think she has been towards me. How the hell do play act for two years, acting like you give a crap about a guy, that you love this guy, and then in one fell swoop do a complete 180 and turn your back on him like he didn't even exist? What kind of screwed up human being does that to another person? I want her to ponder that question for the rest of her life. It is not an attempt to get back with her. I want her to experience pain and regret and ask herself that question every time she remembers me. I won't send a letter. I was in a bad place yesterday. Today I have the day off. There are no classes as my teacher is in Barcelona today. So, I'm chilling at my little VRBO, caught up on my sleep. I'm not playing today. I may drive to Madrid and hang out tonight with one of my classmates who I have become good friends with. I think I am mad more at myself than anything. I walked away from my music career with my ex-wife because I thought I was doing the right thing. Then she cheated and I divorced her but was never able to get back on track with my music, so it became a hobby while I made a living at a regular job. I have always resented myself for allowing a woman to steer me away from my passion. I should have never allowed that to happen. Same thing here with Sarah. I invested all that time and energy into the relationship only to get blindsided again. I was better off in the intervening years just having casual hookups and short flings. I won't make that mistake again. Some guys just don't have it in the cards for having long-term relationships, and I'm one of them. I am still not over Sarah and I felt like I had cheated on her for some bizarre reason. Second, this woman I was with was a good 20 years younger than me. She is a dance student visiting one of the studios here and we met at her practice yesterday where I and another guitar student had to go to play for the dancers. I messed up with my playing and she messed up in her dancing and we both sort of bonded over our shared shame. I asked her to coffee and then we went back for the afternoon class, then we went to supper afterwards, then we ended up in bed. She is indeed beautiful. Not Spanish, Estonian. Where is Estonia? Never even heard of that country before yesterday. But I doubt there will be a replay. She was gone before I woke up this morning and I probably won't see her again. I definitely needed some companionship. She spoke good English and it was just nice to sit and talk to a woman for a few hours, among other things. But that old dull ache is still there. Yes, it will take some time to stop thinking about Sarah. She won't be coming back here again. If I know her, once she decides on something she rarely turns back. I stuck a post-it on top of the envelope telling her to no longer contact me and to never come on my property again. So, I don't think I'm playing the game. I'm just tired, man. You know, since I divorced my first cheating wife 20-something years ago, I have been out with well over a hundred women and slept with close to a quarter of them. Most were one-offs. A quarter were worth pursuing to have at the least a mildly emotional and physical relationship with, and I would say only five of those women were of a quality that I would consider marriageable. Five out of a hundred. Sarah was one of those, and if even she couldn't go the distance, what does that bode for the majority of women I meet? I am tired. I am discouraged. I am disgusted with the state of our society today. There are times when I get sick of having a D I have come to a place where I no longer believe in committed love. It is a terrible place to be. The trip to Spain taught me one thing, wherever you go, there you are. You cannot leave yourself and your problems behind. The trip to Spain was educational and I came away a better guitar player. That's it. It wasn't restful or healing or spiritually enlightening the way I thought it would be. When I was splitting up with my first wife, she said all the right things and all the things she thought I wanted to hear, and I swallowed them hook, line, and sinker. I have had some other relationships over the years where I had women actively two-timing me while feeding me all the sweet platitudes in order to keep me off balance. So, you can understand why I did not want to open that floodgate by reading Sarah's texts or messages. Been there done that. It is possible she had been considering getting back together with her husband for some time. I was not aware of it, and I am pretty good at seeing signs. I tend to think the passing of her mother-in-law was the catalyst, and everything crashed down quickly after that. 
I think the reason she had such passionate bonding with me that last time was because it was kind of her way of saying goodbye to me on some physical level, before dropping the bomb on me, or maybe it was manipulation. I will never know. She loved me until she didn't love me anymore. Funny how some people can just turn it off. I really have a hard time understanding how she thought he was the better choice given the poor marriage she had, but a woman wants what a woman wants. Her mother-in-law was not wealthy. Most of the money mother-in-law had was tied up in her husband's care. It is a great irony that the father-in-law, who suffers from severe dementia, is still among the living. I think the mother-in-law wore herself out caring for her husband. I think Sarah and her ex-husband now boyfriend and she have a codependent relationship. I like to think that when she was with me, she was showing the best parts of what she could be, and her ex now boyfriend will be getting what he threw away in the first place. I don't get it. Dogs return to their vomit, no. Well, I blame myself for assuming because I helped her and her sons out a lot, did lots of nice things for her, and showed her consistent love and affection that I should expect to receive the same treatment in return. I guess in this day and age that is old-fashioned thinking. The more I pay attention to social media the more I realize how I am not cut out for the 21st century. I find myself ensconcing myself in my house, rarely going out, just hanging out with my music and my dog and letting the rest of the world go on without me. Last night Sarah's oldest boy ran away from home. Her friend called me frantic and begged me to come help them, as if for some reason they thought I would know where he was. I called him. He answered. I drove to where he was. The stupid kid had taken an Uber from Oceanside all the way to La Jolla where he thought one of his friends would be waiting for him. Of course, the equally stupid friend was nowhere to be found. I talked to him for a while, got him calmed down, and then drove him home to his mom's house. I called the friend back and told her we were coming. A cop and a crowd of about 15 friends and family were there including Sarah and her ex. Jesus H. I didn't stay longer than I needed to. I hugged the boy and told him it was going to be alright and then I just hopped back in my truck and took off. No talking to anyone. Sarah called to me but I ignored her. I ran like a rape tape y'all. My phone has been blowing up all day with calls from numbers I don't know and I have been ignoring them. I can't escape it. I don't have the emotional strength for this. I feel like in Godfather 3. No matter how hard I try to get out they just keep sucking me back in. To change my phone numbers would mess me up in so many ways. I'm a day trader and I have several brokers who I call regularly, and then I have my friends and relatives. It sounds like a great idea but it would just cause too many headaches. Sarah has been good about not calling me. It was one of her friends who called me because she knew the boy trusted me. He and his dad got in a big fight. They simply do not like each other. It is a mutual dislike. I have no doubt his dad loves him but they lost their ability to communicate. The boy told me his mom and dad are back to fighting like the old days and that nothing really changed. They were nice to each other for a while but went back to the way they had been pre-affair. For the most part, I had to talk to him for a while to get him to calm down. He tried to spend the night at his friend's house but his mom wouldn't let him. She didn't want any trouble. So, I was able to make him see reason and he finally told me where he was. I already know his dad resents the hell out of me and that in turn causes more friction between the ex and Sarah. So, for now, any influence I have on that kid is going to just make his home life more of a hell to him. I texted him this morning to see if he was okay and he said he is. His dad is staying at his own place this week instead of Sarah's, so they can both cool down. But the boy resented his dad before his parents split up the first time and that resentment has only grown. I'm not thinking that far ahead. I did talk to Barb. Remember her. Turns out the cops did a referral to child services, so now the county is involved and Sarah and her ex should be getting a visit from some case workers shortly. Barb says she has very little patience with Sarah now. She thinks Sarah is very regretful about screwing things up with me. She has asked Barb a couple of times if she or her husband have talked to me. She wanted to know how I was doing. So sweet. In fact, I did play golf with Barb's husband a couple weeks ago and he smoked me. This whole crap show with Sarah has knocked me off my game. Kisses me off. I'm not getting in the middle of anything. I just offer a sympathetic ear. In fact, when I did talk to the boy, I tried to give him some pointers on how to get along with his dad. Look, there is no one on this earth who wants that kid to get along with his dad more than I do. I had a crap relationship with my old man and it is one of my great regrets that I was never able to fix it. I got sucked back in several times with my first wife and so I knew that Sarah would string me along because that is what monkey branching women do. I saw Sarah's attempts for what they were, manipulation. Doing well. Two setters ago, Sarah called me from a mutual friend's phone. Turns out she had borrowed the friend's phone without his knowledge and called me. We only spoke for a minute. She said she wanted to thank me for finding her boy and bringing him home and then tried to make small talk. I didn't really want to talk. Hearing her voice took me right back to square one. She was acting sad and kept begging me to say something to her. I just told her I hoped everything worked out between her son and his dad and told her I should get off the phone. She asked if we could meet and talk some time and I told her no, that she was back with her ex and it wouldn't be right. That was it. Later on, I got a text from the mutual friend apologizing to me and admonishing Sarah for using his phone without his knowing. 
On a positive note, I met a very nice younger woman, age 37, who is a friend of one of my business colleagues. She is Asian and very attractive. We have a date set up for this coming weekend and I can't wait. I need to get out and meet people and stop being a hermit. Does anyone here have any experience dating Vietnamese women? It would be nice to know a little about what to expect going in. She has lived in the U.S. for about 10 years and is already a U.S. citizen, but she has never been married. Even after all these weeks, I'm still jealous of him. I keep dreaming of them sleeping together and it hurts, because I was her man, not him. Is this normal to still feel jealousy after all this time? I would do something like this just for the pure joy of sticking it to him. I need to suppress the caveman in me. Wasn't trying to spark controversy. Just wanted pointers on how to date a Vietnamese woman as opposed to have a relationship with one. I just wanted to know if she will be expecting anything from me culturally. What are the dos and don'ts? What can I talk about and what could make her uncomfortable? Do Asian women respond to gentlemanly behavior, like pulling out the chair for them at table or holding the door to the car open for them? I had this happen to me before. Back a few years before I met Sarah, I was going out with a lady I liked a lot. We had gone on two dates and on the third date I took her to a very quiet and romantic cocktail lounge so we could talk more about ourselves without distraction. It was really nice and intimate. We got a booth in a dark corner and were snuggling and getting all handsy with each other. I knew I would wake up with her in the morning. Everything was good up until the point she asked me about my first marriage. I told her the truth, didn't try to lie to her. She was noticeably taken aback but she put on a fake smile and tried to be a trooper the rest of the evening. Her hand came off my thigh. The conversation dwindled down to superfluous jabber and finally I just took her home. No kiss goodnight and no fourth date. Yes, the dirt of infidelity sticks on the betrayed and won't wash off. I think maybe the reason that Sarah accepted my past was that deep down cheating is really no real big deal to her. Maybe I will send her a text and tell her this story and my revelation about her tonight. Anyway, I had a very nice date with the Viet lady. We had fun. She made a vase and I made a coffee mug. We even got into a face painting fight with pottery glaze. Lots of flirting and she let me kiss her goodnight. It was nice. Not too much deep conversation. We kept it light. I'm not sure if there is chemistry there but it was nice to sit and spend time with an intelligent and beautiful woman. Like I said, if I don't get a second date with her at least I got a coffee mug out of the deal. I am in very good shape and taking care of myself. When I say I'm tired of dating, I mean I'm tired mentally. I just don't have it in me to go in and put on my best face and act the role of Mr. Cool. It just turns me off thinking about it. This has nothing to do with Viet Lady and everything to do with my piss-poor attitude towards dating right now. She shouldn't become a victim of my uncertainties. I didn't gray rock her. I called her back this evening and we talked for a while and I told her I was not in a good place to be dating and that I probably wouldn't be calling her back again. I know that will disappoint all of you, but I can't do something when I feel like I'm faking it, and I would be faking it if I took her out again. It is not Viet girl that I don't trust I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself not to get prematurely attached to her. I don't need any more attachments this point in my life. I haven't gotten over Sarah yet and I don't need to bring that baggage into any friendship or relationship. Looking back, I let myself fall in love with Sarah too quickly. We just had such great chemistry and we gelled so well that I put aside my usual precaution and let myself fall for her hook and sinker. I was so dazzled by everything about her that I overlooked things in her past that I should have paid more attention to. To those who say that a person's past should have no bearing on the present, or that it your partner's physical or romantic past of none of your business. Well, they are obviously people who have never been jilted or two-timed. It does matter and it should be taken into account. It's not that I distrust women now. Not at all. It is myself I don't trust. I don't trust my instincts, if I ever had instincts to begin with. Thing is I thought I was at a point in my life where I had burned through decades of purely superficial dating relationships and was feeling like I had finally met the woman I was going to settle down and spend the rest of my dotage with. Thing is, little did I know she had other plans. She was using me as a placeholder, nothing more, and I didn't see it. It is not cynicism or misanthropy. I have extreme self-distrust right now. I wouldn't trust myself to pick a decent toothpaste right now. Lately over the past week or so I have gotten calls from common friends of ours asking me how I am doing. Just out of the blue. Some are people I have not talked to since I broke up with her. I am polite but while I'm talking to them, I'm thinking why the hell are you calling me? The talk is superficial and pointless. I'm thinking Sarah is sending out her birdies gathering intel on me. I'm thinking of just screening all my calls from now on. So, I talked with Barb last night and she confirmed that Sarah and her ex are again broken up, this time for good apparently. Sarah is back alone and apparently not doing too well. Barb says she saw her last week and she looks like hell. Barb told me to ignore all the people calling me and asking if I am going to get back together with Sarah. She says as far as she knows it is not Sarah instigating these people, but rather they are all rubberneckers looking to watch some drama and hoping I'll try to get back together with her just to watch the show. Barb is of the opinion that Sarah knows I am no longer an option and that she blew it bad. As for all the onlookers, I have blocked them each and every one. They are parasites. 
Also, Barb says that she has pretty much washed her hands of Sarah and has little to do with her anymore. Their friendship is basically over. Barb says she and her husband are not going to continue enabling Sarah while she makes one bad choice after another. You would have to know Barb to understand why Barb would turn her back on a two-decade BFF friendship. Well, it is because Barb is a no-nonsense person who doesn't suffer fools lightly. She warned Sarah not to go back to her ex and excoriated her when she did and told her she was an idiot for tossing me aside. It's all weird. I guess I had the love goggles on and wasn't able to see her friends for the immature infants they are. Now that I look back with clear eyes, all her crowd acted more like partying college kids than adults. I partied myself out in the 80 seconds. I have lived every type of debauchery there is and then some, but those morons just never knew when to leave the party. It's funny. One night many months ago before the breakup she and some of the friends were sitting around a fire pit talking about all the crazy stuff they did in high school and college, and I was just smiling and shaking my head. So, when it got round to me, I didn't say a word, because if I told them stuff I had done back when I was in bands and living the rock and roll life, Sarah probably would have broken up with me right then and there. I messed up bad. I called her last night. I was drunk and stoned. I ripped her ass up one side and down the other and told her what a stupid, vacuous twit she was. She hung up on me of course but not before I got in some more deadly jabs. Now I have her army after me, idiot. An update. I am doing very well. The holidays were full and busy and I spent most of it with family and doing a little traveling. I have not heard from Sarah or any of our mutual friends and that suits me fine. I have blocked calls from most if not all of those people and deactivated my FB account. I have had a few dates with various women and a couple one-night stands and I am gradually going back to the bachelor I was prior to when I met Sarah. I have pretty much locked the door on my heart. No more allowing myself to feel for another woman. I won't make that mistake again. I can continue to meet single women and have unattached fun with them in order to meet my physical yearnings. I am not lonely as I have lots of friends, my dogs and my hobbies to fulfill me. I am walking and exercising daily and have actually lost a lot of weight since my split with Sarah. I feel good, look good and have a good outlook on the future. I don't take advantage of the women I sleep with. And it often doesn't reach bonding. It happens maybe a third of the time. These women know exactly where I stand on relationships. Believe it or not, there are some women who just want to get laid and not expect to owe the guy anything afterwards. I treat my dates very well, wine and dine them, pay for everything. So, if on the off chance we do sleep together, she has gotten all the perks and I am the one who has to pay the credit card at the end of the month. She's not out anything, not one single thing. I am a bad boy, that's the thing. I was a professional rock musician in the 80s during the whole Hollywood glam rock era. I got tats when tats weren't cool. I rode a Harley, had the long hair and wore leather, partied hard and lived the lifestyle. I was way wilder than her ex-husband ever thought about being. But I grew up, learned about money management, business and taught myself investing and real estate. I still have a rock and roll attitude, but I am also self-made and stable. It is possible to have all those qualities and still kick ass when I need to. She had the best of both worlds with me and threw it away because she is codependent on him and he is a narcissist. Such types feed off each other. Believe me when I say that I anguished over these same possibilities before I made the decision to cut ties with her. Believe me, I was not imagining things nor did I psyche myself out. Her change towards me was a literal 180. I know well when a woman is friend zoning me and I got marginalized by her overnight. I was getting calls from lots of people immediately after the funeral asking me what was up. This breakup did not occur behind closed doors. It was very public unfortunately and even her close friends were disgusted by how she treated me. So yes, in a parallel universe the possibilities you brought up could theoretically happen, but I can assure you this was not the case in my situation. In fact, I would say that I reacted in a very level-headed manner. I did not storm out of the reception. I said goodnight to everyone and I simply got tired of waiting for her to finish up with her lingering guests so I quietly slipped out. Not once during this whole fiasco did, I talk bad about her to friends nor did I ever raise my voice to her. I never got mean until that last phone call to her a few months afterwards. In fact, I gave her the easiest and least drama-filled breakup a woman could get when she snubs a man. I simply walked off the stage without bumping into the scenery. She treated me appallingly, but I walked away with my head high. I don't regret how I broke up with her. I regret how I did not see the signs and not see her for what she truly was, a con artist. Update, I lost a potential girlfriend last night. She said I was vetting her too much, asking too many questions about her past, probing into her private life too much. She didn't like the questions I was asking her about her prior relationship where she suddenly ended a 10-year long-term partnership for nebulous reasons. She stormed off and I sat there and realized I just dodged a narcissist. I wasn't interrogating her, not anywhere near that. It was the third time we had gone out, we were talking over dessert, and her story of how she and her ex broke up changed considerably from the prior time she had told me about it. I caught some inconsistencies in her story and simply asked her why her story changed. She got offended that I noticed and when I told her it was a legit question, she got angry. 
That led to her getting all hot and the date ending fairly abruptly. She left me behind in the restaurant and when I caught up to her, she refused to let me take her home. I guess she called an Uber home because I went ahead and left. At first, I thought she had overreacted, but then later on I thought it might have all been an act. She knew she got caught in a lie and when she couldn't think of a way out of the lie, she feigned anger as a diversionary tactic. When I still wasn't buying what she was selling she got up and left in a huff. I think it was kind of humorous looking back on it. Not a big issue for me anyway as I wasn't really into her and probably would not have asked her out again anyways. Interesting thing is I never really ever probed much into her prior relationship. In fact, I don't recall really asking her much about it at all. She volunteered a story about the breakup on our last date, after the wine had flowed for a while and loosened her tongue. I wasn't drinking because I had to drive and I just sat there listening and absorbing. Too bad a lot of it was bogus. I have a pretty sharp memory and I catch inconsistencies. Update, a lot has been going on. I have been extremely busy lately as I have embarked on a business venture and have been putting in a good 80 hours a week getting it up and running. Hopefully once all is set up and in place, I can peel back to a more normal 30 to 40. Semi-retirement was not suiting me well. I realized that one of the reasons I allowed a fraud like my ex-GF into my life was because I had gotten lackadaisical. I had lost my purpose and direction. Well, you all saw where that got me. So, I went about looking to start a venture into something that I was passionate about and that is what I have been pouring myself into, and I feel a thousand times better about myself. I have realized that I am most content when I am working, setting goals and meeting them. Dating, casual bonding and looking for validation in others is a dead end. That is a lesson that I learned after the fiasco with my ex-wife, then forgot, then had to relearn again after this last train wreck. I don't date much at all anymore and I am learning to be comfortable in my own company. I have many male friends who are doing the same as me. I have my dogs, my garden, my music, and my new business. Loneliness and aimlessness are no longer factors in my life. Looking back Sarah was a people pleaser, which I am ardently not. I have struggled since breaking up with her to distinguish what was real about her behavior towards me and what was fake. I have come to the conclusion that the person I was dating was a construct, a virtual reality screen hiding what she really was underneath. The fact that she was able to play this role for a year was an astounding display of endurance. I have ceased hanging out with those mutual friends. I succeeded in bowing out stage left without knocking over any scenery on my way out the door. As far as my life goes, I have gone back to the way things were pre-Sarah. I live alone and content with my dogs and my music and I have occasional hookups with various single women, many of whom I have known for years and who are themselves not looking to ever marry again. I started a small home-based business which has taken off and is doing very well. But because I am really starting to move on from Sarah and continuing to talk about it hashes up old negative emotion that I have done a pretty good job at process and leaving behind. Kind of like going to the garbage bin and opening up the old smelly trash bags and sifting through them again. It's not serving me to keep rehashing everything that happened. I no longer miss Sarah or have any residual feelings. I don't hate her. I guess I feel pity for her because she really is a screwed up woman and I am sure she is going to continue this cycle of behavior with other partners. I cannot save her and it is not my job to do so. It never was. I have accepted that I am unlucky when it comes to choosing partners. My ex-wife let me down and Sarah let me down. Despite my experience, I don't seem to be improving my era. My comment, you sound like you are in a great place and have a lot of wisdom to share when needed. Don't let your ex bring you down. Remember that.